I'll fight you. You're smaller than me. Oh, all right. Go on. Knock it off. I dare you. Well, I don't want to fight you. You're bigger than me. <laughs> then take back what you said. You can't make me. Is that so? Hit it. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to knock his block off. What? I'm going to massacrate him. Oh. <laughs> hey, Olivia, what's going on you here? You should be ashamed of yourself. How, what will people think about the way you're being brought up? Waving your fist at a guest. That's the most disgraceful thing you can do, fighting a guest in your own home. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Mommy. Come on, let's go outside. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What's going on here, Russ? He called Uncle Tanusa a liar. He called Uncle Tanusa. a... Well, why would you call Uncle Tanusa a liar? Well, you should hear the things he's told me. What? Well, I was telling him about how Uncle Tanus is coming to visit us. Yeah. And about some of the wonderful things he's done. Yeah, well, I just don't believe he's gone without water longer than a camel. <laughs> Get him up, fat so! Never mind. Never mind. Now, just sit down. Now, who told you the story that Uncle Tanus can go longer without water than a camel? Uncle Tanus. Oh. <laughs> it was on his last visit. He was telling us how he was going across the desert on a camel, mm -hmm. and he shared his last drop of water with the camel. And they went on for days. And then when, then when they were just 11 miles from home, the camel dropped from thirst, and Uncle Tanus had to drag him that last 11 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he got his nickname, Tarshush El Kabar. Tarshush El Kabar? Yeah, that's Lebanese for the man who made a monkey out of a camel. <laughs> Baloney. Baloney, eh? Here, now. Oh, just once, Dad. Never mind. <laughs> now, fighting isn't going to settle this argument at all. So let's just skip it, huh? Forget the whole thing. Uncle Tanus! Uncle Tanus! Yeah. How are you? Before, before hellos, before water. I can give you to drink water. <laughs> Gee, Uncle, so good to see you. We, we missed you. I miss you too, Donnie, and that's why I come all the way to New York. I miss you, I miss Kathy, I miss favorite grandnephew Rusty, I miss favorite grandniece Yulene. Where is water? <laughs> <laughs> No, that's more water than Dean Martin drinks in a year. <laughs> Boy, you sure were thirsty. Oh, you? I was almost dead from thirst. How come? How come? I walk all the way from bus stop two blocks. <laughs> Wise guy, ask him yourself. I don't have to ask him. He can't even go two blocks without water. Uh, ask me why. This is Richie, and he doesn't believe that you outlasted a camel and then dragged him 11 miles. Oh, well, he right. What? Hey, huh? Who could drag a camel 11 miles? See? No, I carried him. <laughs> I'm gonna let you kids carry my bags up to the room, huh? Okay. Because I'm still a little tired from all that camel carrying. <laughs> and as a reward, I'm gonna tell you a story about your great-great-grandfather, who was only man ever to swim the English Channel. Oh, lots of guys have swum the English Channel. Underwater? <laughs> About what, you know? Well, about all those stories Uncle Tanus tells the children. Well, they're amusing stories. Why should you be worried? Well, they're, they're lies, Danny. Oh, now hold it, Irish. They're not lies. They're exaggerations. They're, they're cute, tall stories, like, like Baron Munchausen and Paul Bunyan. I know, honey, but the children believe them implicitly and literally. So? So what's going to happen when they find out that these stories aren't true? Ah. Well, don't um, 
me, Danny. Really, Richie has doubts already. He's afraid to say anything because he's smaller than Rusty. But what happens when some doubting kid comes along who's bigger than Rusty? Don't worry, Linda will massacrate him. <laughs> Honey, stop joking. This is serious. When they discover that these stories aren't true, why, they'll lose their faith in him and it'll be a terrible blow. Clancy, you're making a big thing out of nothing. I was raised on those stories. Daddy, I... Daddy, guess what? What? My great-great-grandfather was a king. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, King Ahmed the Unwashed. King <laughs> Ahmed the Unwashed? <laughs> He had 28 wives and 264 children. No wonder he was unwashed. He couldn't get into the bathroom. If we ever move back to the old country, I'll be King Rusty Bandani. <laughs> yeah, and I'll be Princess Shish Kebab. <laughs> I go to the old country, I can be King Rusty's keeper of the harem. Yeah, boy! Yeah, boy! Keeper of the harem! Yeah! Hey, Mr. Williams, what's a harem? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's where the king keeps his books. <laughs> Let's get back to Uncle Tanoose. Yeah. Yeah, let's! Boy, oh, father of kings. You better go upstairs right now and tell Uncle Tanoose to stop telling those stories for the, for the children. Oh, come on, honey. What do you want to do, hurt his feelings? Well, it's better to hurt his feelings than to have him find out he's not only a camel carrier, he's a bull thrower. <laughs> <laughs> so then they send your great uncle to Olympic Games. And in the pole vaulting event, he jump up to 18 feet. Wow! He must hold the world's record. Oh, no, he was disqualified. Why? Right, and when he make the jump, he forget to use the bowl. <laughs> Not only was he a great athlete, you know, but was great inventor. He invented the telephone. I always thought Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. No, your great uncle invented the telephone. He made first one, then he tell Mr. Bell how to make second one. <laughs> so he got somebody to call up. <laughs> One telephone by itself is no good at all. You can't even get the wrong number. <laughs> yeah, Kids, kids he we, we well. haven't had a chance to visit with Uncle Tanus at all. Do you mind? Oh, Daddy. Oh, come on, run along. Run along. Go along. We want to talk I come too. down soon and I tell you how once I almost married with Greta Garbo. Greta Garbo? <laughs> really? Oh, hurry, will you, Uncle Tanus? <laughs> Go on. Oh, that's nice kid, Rusty, Danya. You know, he would make good king. <laughs> Look, I mean, uh, you think you ought to tell the children stories like that? Like what? Well, like you almost married Greta Garbo. Well, why shouldn't I? It's a clean story. <laughs> but, Uncle Tanoosh, you didn't almost marry Greta Garbo. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. well, i tell you how it was. A long time ago, I was in a moving picture show, see? And I see up on screen, good-looking woman, big, strong, healthy. I think maybe be good wife for me, able to bully plow. <laughs> so I sit down and I write a letter. Dear beautiful lady Greta Garbo, you like to marry strong, handsome man, six feet, two and a half inches tall, got 16 goats, five cows, take a bath twice a week. You come to Lido right away. <laughs> so I wait one week, two weeks, lady no come. So I think to myself, you know, if she can find way to Toledo from California, maybe it's not so smart. Maybe good thing I don't marry with her. So, I don't marry with her. But almost did. How about that, honey? Greta Garbo was almost my aunt. Uh, Daddy and I were just talking about how the children feel about you. Weren't we, darling? Yeah, yeah, we were. We were, we were saying, uh... Uh, how they love and, and, and admire you, and especially how, how, how much they believe in you. Oh, sure. And, uh... <clears throat> and that's the most important thing in my life, Tony. As a matter of fact, it's his whole life now, you know? He, you don't know how he is with the old man, uh, no strong anymore, uh, no use to nobody, except the important to children. Old man, very important to children. Oh, now, come on, Unc, you're not an old man. Oh, Diane, I know the truth. Please, I know now. Sometimes people is even laughing 
behind my back. And sometimes they even laughing behind my front. But <laughs> you know, those, those kids of yours, Rusty, Linda, they, they listen to me. Oh, is that so, Uncle Tanu? Oh, that's wonderful, Uncle Tanu. Oh, boy, that's great, Uncle Tanu. And so for a little while, Tanus walk tall and straight like used to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, look, Uncle, uh, we'll unpack your bags. Why don't you run down and tell the children the rest of that story about you and Aunt Greta? <laughs> yeah, I, I better hurry along. <laughs> you know, I wonder. Whatever happened to her? Why she didn't come to Toledo? Maybe she got lost, huh? Yeah. Could be she take a wrong turn at Albuquerque, huh? <laughs> My hero. You certainly told him, didn't you? Look, I, I, I noticed you weren't breaking down any doors to tell him he was full of baloney. Well, that's a man's job. Honey, it's nobody's job. Why don't we just leave him alone? Those stories aren't hurting anyone. Well, they're going to hurt him if the children ever find out that they're not the truth. How are they going to find out? He's too shrewd for that. You can't prove or disprove anything, he says. He's always talking about the past. When my baba was little baby. When my grandbaba's baba was little baby. My great grand uncle's baba was little baby, baby, grand, baby, baby, back. But if he goes one more baba back, he's going to be back to Adam. <laughs> wicked, mean king who hate your ancestors, see? He sent his whole army, they should kill your ancestor. Now, your ancestor is out there in the middle of the desert. Doesn't have sword, doesn't have shield, no spear. Got nothing with which to fight, all alone. So he starts to pile up stones. Takes all the stones he can find, makes a big pile here, makes a big pile there, makes another big pile there. All in one night he does this. The next morning, the sun comes up, the army is ready to kill your ancestor. They see all these big pile stones that he's gonna throw on them. Well, they are afraid, so they run away. And your ancestor wins the battle, he goes home. Well, what happened to those big pile of stones? What's the matter? You never hear of the pyramids? About <laughs> 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 the Sphinx. Now, the Sphinx and your Aunt Sharifa, they had the face rather like his face. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I'll, 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 I'll hold it down a minute, will you? Before you build the Sphinx, keep it quiet. Hello. Oh, hi, Phil. Sure, I always do this sports writer's dinner. Sketch with who? All right. Easy, one rehearsal. Okay. Well, that'll be fine. All right, you set it up. Goodbye. Well, your royal highnesses, I may be just a plain, ordinary American peasant, but tomorrow I'm gonna meet a real king. Really, Daddy? Who? Yeah, the king of the middleweights, Kid Moore. Kid Moore? That's right. Wow! Wow! Yeah, wow! <laughs> Who's Kid Moore? <laughs> King of the Middleweights, middleweight champion of the world. It could be heavyweight champion of the world if he eat what I tell him to eat. <laughs> you know Kid Moore, Uncle Tanoose? Well, I used to was my best friend. Really? He never lift a glove without first asking Uncle Tanoose. <laughs> you see, like this. Just before the big fight, he said to me, dear best friend, what I gonna eat to be as strong as you? Because you are strongest man in the whole wide world. Why, even your muscles got muscles. Really, Uncle Danny, listen, Uncle Tanoose has gone too far this time. It was all right when he was telling stories way back in the past, but Kid Moore is right here in the present now. I know, I know, I know, and I know something you don't know. What? Kid Moore is coming here to rehearse with me tomorrow. You mean he's coming here to our house? Yeah. Oh, Danny, that's terrible. What are you going to do? worry about it. It's no problem. I know what to do. What? I'll kill myself. Let <laughs> me borrow Uncle Tanoose for a minute. Oh, Daddy, you're always coming in right in the middle of the best part. Come on, come on. Go, go outside. Go, go on, play. Go play. Pretty soon I go and I tell you what more about the uh, kid Moore and me and how okay. we Let's go tell the other kids. Go yeah, yeah. Well, Boy, we don't have quit. to tell everybody Boy. in the neighborhood. <laughs> What do you want, man? Look, um, remember we were saying to you about how, how the children love and admire you? How could they help it? <laughs> and also, especially, how much they believe in you. Uh, sure, sure, I remember. 
Now, I mean, huh? wouldn't it be awful if suddenly one day they stopped believing in you? Diane, bite your tongue. <laughs> but, Uncle Tanus, supposing someday one of these stories you're telling uh, turned out that you were telling a lie. Me? The Lebanese George Washington? <laughs> Look, father of our country, <laughs> this may come as a shock to you, so brace yourself. Kid Moore is coming to this house tomorrow. Fine, we bake a cake. <laughs> hey, don't play games with me. Now, be sensible. Set the kids down and tell them the truth about you and Kid Moore. Believe me, they'll understand. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right, Daniel. Yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna tell them the whole truth about me and Kid Moore. Yeah. Good. Oh, that's wonderful, Uncle Tanus. Believe me, they'll have a lot more respect for you. Oh, sure. Especially when I tell them how I help him win that championship fight. <laughs> Doesn't he understand what you're talking about? <laughs> of course he does. The big phony, he's just gonna bluff his way out, that's all. Well, how can he bluff his way out when Kid Moore comes here to the house tomorrow? I don't know, he'll figure out a way. Oh, darling, <laughs> why, why don't you call Kid Moore and suggest to him that you rehearse someplace else? What, miss all the fun? Fun? To see your poor old uncle humiliated and exposed? Don't you worry about that Middle East Munchausen. <laughs> Believe me, I'll bet he's already got it figured out how he's gonna weasel out of this thing, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh. So I said to him, Champion, if you wanna be strong like me, you gotta eat like me. Now look, we're gonna have lunch now. So you have leg of lamb with steak on the side, a few eggs, maybe a couple dozen, uh, five or six quarts milk, a bucket of rice, but it's lunch, you gotta eat light. <laughs> but if we're gonna eat supper, we're gonna have much more to eat. Now, for instance, in supper, we're gonna start off with a big bowl Daddy, of yolk. That must be Kid Moore. Yeah, that must be Kid Moore. Oh, Danielle, I've been thinking, I don't think that I want to meet Kid Moore here now. No? No, no. You see, I thought he was your best friend. Yeah, used to was my best friend, but he insulted me, you know, oh. in front of people, in by, and he wouldn't apologize. Oh. He laughed at me when I tell him he got to eat dates stuffed with goat cheese. <laughs> oh. He used to be my best friend, but now he's maybe my worst enemy. Well, then I don't blame you, Uncle no. You shouldn't meet him face to face. No, not here. And, and don't you tell him that I'm no, here. No, I was. You know, I don't want he should beg me to be his best friend. Oh, I got very soft heart. You you know? So I go upstairs oh, my room, I stay go there. Ahead. I don't want to meet him. All here. right, Uncle Weasel. <laughs> Well, hello, hello, champ. Come in. I'm Danny Williams. I know. It's a pleasure to meet you, Danny. Yeah, this is Mrs. Williams. Well, how do you do, Mr. Moore? I'm happy to know you. Mutual, Mrs. Williams. And uh, our son, Rusty, and his friend, Richard, and our baby, Linda. Hello, Linda. Any worst enemy of Uncle Tanusis is a worst enemy of mine. Now yeah. that Linda, <laughs> Linda. No. You hurt Uncle Tanusis' feelings. And he was only trying to help you. Yeah. Kids. Who's Uncle Tanus? <laughs> Did you say, who's Uncle Tanoos? Yes, who's Uncle Tanoos? What? You mean to tell me you don't know Uncle Tanoos? Russell. I'm sorry, Rusty. I'm afraid I don't know any Uncle Tanoos. Daddy? Now, look, son. Look. You... Uncle Tanoos tells you a lot of stories. He's been telling them to you ever since you were an Ehido grasshopper. He does it to entertain you. I mean, to, yeah, that's it, right, honey. He, he just makes up those stories for, for fun. That's right, like fairy tales. You understand? You mean I'm not Princess Shish Kebab? <laughs> <laughs> well, all that other stuff about me being a king and everything. None of that was true. I'd like to see you make me bow down when I leave your presence again. <laughs> <laughs> he made you bow down? Sure, every time I left the room, I had to bow out backwards. <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. I, I don't know quite what I did, but I'm sorry I did it. Look, champ, it, it's, it's not your fault at all. It's a... Actually, it's a silly family mix-up. Pay no attention. Would you do me a favor? Would you uh, 
come to the Copa Club with me and we'll rehearse there. Any place you say. Fine, fine, champ. Uh, I'll tell you what you do. Uh, grab us a cab. I'll be right down. Right? I'll see you downstairs. Fine, thanks, Here champ. You. Now, kids. Now, don't take it like that. Now, actually, it's perfectly harmless what he's done. I mean, so he exaggerates a little bit. You understand, son? Yeah, Daddy, we understand. We kids do it all the time. Well, sure. But there's a difference between making things seem a little bigger and telling a lie. Now, Rusty, Uncle Tanus doesn't lie. He does, Daddy. He said he knows Kid more, and he doesn't know him. Now, isn't that a lie? Well... I can't hold a grudge forever. All right, kid. I'm gonna let you apologize, and then I forgive you. Where is... Where, you hiding from me, son? <laughs> the kid is gone, Uncle Tanus. Oh, well, then I'm gonna call him on the telephone tomorrow, and I'm gonna let him apologize, then I forgive him. We'll be best friends again. <laughs> yeah, but in the meantime, kids, come on. I'm gonna tell you how I help him win that big fight. Here, Rusty, you sit here, Linda. This is the best seat in the house. You see, was right before the big championship fight, and I... Come. Fast. Lynn. Diane. Kathy. Why is everybody turned their back on my front? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Oh, I mean, why couldn't you stay in the past? Huh? Just way in the past. Where where you want to expose yourself at... Come on, Danny, the cab is double parked. Fine, let's go. Tony! I'll be doggone. Go, cheese, Tony! I don't want to talk you, on what you. What are you doing here? I don't want to talk on you till you apologize. Okay, Tony, I'll apologize. Next time I'll eat anything you say. You will? Yes. Even dates stuffed with gojis. All right, then you promote it from one standing back to best friend. Tony, hold <laughs> on. Oh, oh, no, 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 hey, Jim. I, I thought you said you didn't know my Uncle Tanoos. Uncle Tanoos? Is that what you call him? This is gojis Tony. I wouldn't put on a glove without him. My good luck charm. Yeah. Oh, Tony. Well, some people call me Uncle Tanoos, and some people call me gojis Tony. I don't like they call me God Chief Tony, but some people do. <laughs> you know, in old country, they used to call me Samson? Because you were so strong. No, I used to go with Lady Barber named Delilah. <laughs> I was in terrible trouble. Everybody ran away, leave me right there in the middle of the jungle, and I alone got to wrestle with this giant gorilla. You mean Uncle Tanoos said you wrestled with a gorilla? Sure. May it rest in peace. <laughs> oh, was terrible because everybody ran away and I am lost in jungle. Every night I gotta light fires, keep away the wild animals. I got plenty to eat, but pretty soon, no more water. No more water to drink, no more water to wash with. And then the wild animals start to light fires to keep me away. <laughs> because jungle is a very difficult place, you know. I got yes. news. Honestly, your stories are just fabulous. <laughs> you know, honey, you should use some of Uncle Tanusa's stories in your nightclub routine. That's not a bad idea. They'd love them at the Copa. My oh. stories in saloons? Oh, no, no, that is out of the Copa. <laughs> You mean you'd object to my using your stories at the Copa? Well, it isn't that, Danielle, but I already promised my stories to very big television stars. Now, look, you old reprobate. Huh? You're not talking to the kids now. This is your nephew, Danielle, and I happen to know you don't know any big television stars. What do you mean I do so no big television star? I promise him my stories he's going to use them. What's his name? Uh... I, I, I forgot. Yeah, but I know true. them, I promise. Such a big star, you forgot his name. No, that could happen. I forgot oh, his name, on. that's all. Who's at the door? Huh? Is that the door? Oh, sure. Oh, why don't stop. you stop? I'm telling you to stop. I can't. Uh, Hello? Is Uncle Tanoose here? 